Good afternoon, Facebook. This is Stephen, and to the left of me is Angelica, and this is Ask Angelica. I'll get it in a second. Ask Angelica, episode 24. 24 yes. So, now, can you tell us a little bit about uh, today's topic? Yes. Uh, today actually is the official start to autumn and um, I had written a blog post about autumn on Monday um, with songs and whatever else but um, I came across a website which I only briefly mentioned in the blog post I haven't done anything else because it's got a wealth of stuff in there um, it's really aimed at German children um, and, and possibly teachers as well, teachers of, of uh, children um, who want to do things about autumn. So there are some craft activities, there are some poems, some stories, some really easy things like an A to Z of autumn type words, um, which I almost chosen as today's topic. But then I thought, well, the last time when we did Ask Angelica and we spoke about board games, we did words and very short phrases. And I thought, no, we need something a bit more challenging. I should rephrase that. You need something more challenging. I need something more challenging. Yes. So instead of having an autumn A to Z, um, I found one uh, page in on this site um, which talks about autumn and explains a bit about autumn. And there's some lovely sentences and words in there. And I thought they'd be just right for you. I, I, like, I accept the challenge. So okay. the website is Medienwerkstatt and the link, I'm just going to paste the link in um, and the link will go through to Facebook so that yeah. you can have a look there after the show. Obviously, if you're watching now, uh, stay where you are. Yeah, I'll put that on YouTube as well later on. That link takes you to the autumn pages. I mean, the whole thing has got, the whole site has got, loads of information uh, probably a lot of it useful for people working with children as well so well worth having a look around but not now as you said no well, certainly not me i'm, I'm going to try and pronounce these words <laughs> uh, right so phrase number one is herbstadt tag und nack gleicher herbstadt tag und nacht gleicher herbst tag und nacht gleicher Herbst Tag und Nacht gleicher. That's a brilliant compound noun consisting out of one, two, three, four, five words. Okay, so breaking it down into the words, Herbst is autumn. Yep. Tag is day. Und is and. Yep. Nacht is night. <clears throat> and gleicher. Now that's where it's lost me. I've got four out of the five words. Um, but what's the fifth word? Gleicher. Gleiche. Now, today is the official start of autumn, and that means that the day and the night are the same or the same length. Ah, okay. So this is the autumn day and night the same. We have a shorter word for that, don't we? We Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> and I, I would never get this in a thousand years, but we're going to go with... Uh, literal translation, the actual translation is autumn equinox. It is. So, although the English one is a lot shorter, yeah, autumn obviously for, for, um, for herbst and equinox, but um, if I just came across, as a foreigner, if I came across the word ex equinox, I may not be able to work out what that means. Whereas Tag und Nacht gleiche, yeah, day and night the same, I would be able to work out that's the equinox. So Herbst Tag und Nacht gleiche is today. And then, of course, we have the Frühlingstag Nacht und gleiche, the spring equinox as well. Aha. And so Sommertag it's, und Nacht gleiche. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's lovely how it just um, puts all those words together and tells you exactly what it means. It's painting a picture. It is, yes. Right. Uh, phrase number two is slightly longer than the first one. And in fact, it's so long, 
that it won't all fit on the screen. So I'm going to mangle the words as I say, astronomisch gesehen beginnt der Erbst auf der Not Alp Kugel am Tag der Erbst Tag nackt und nackt gleicher. Yes, that's the first part of the sentence. Astronomisch gesehen beginnt der Herbst auf der Nordhalbkugel am Tag der Herbst, Tag und Nachtgleiche. Even I'm struggling with that now. <laughs> der Herbst, Tag und Nachtgleiche. <laughs> well, the, the Herbst, Tag, I'll, I'll never forget that now because we're breaking it down and it's, it's actually five words. So, uh, right, okay, let's start translating this. Uh, astronomisch. Something to do with astronomy? Mm -hmm. Okay, so astronomy sees the beginning of spring. No, I'm getting it totally wrong here. Uh, not, not spring anyway, autumn. Autumn, yeah, sorry. So. You're not, you're not far off there. So astronomically, uh, gesehen is more like seen, but we would use speaking. So astronomically speaking, Autumn in the northern half of the globe. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Nort helps Kugel. <laughs> and a comment from Stephen. Hello, Stephen. And Stephen said, if you're struggling, we've no chance. So, <laughs> uh, right. Know. Okay, welcome to you. Um, right. So, so yes, the, the northern hem hemisphere, again, if you think of the globe, it's the northern half of the globe. Yeah, on the on, and it's Australia, it isn't. yeah. Am Tag der Erbstag und Nacht gleicher. Mm -hmm. The Nacht gleicher wouldn't fit on the screen, uh, so it's on the first day of autumn. On the equinox. Right. Okay. So that was the tongue twister, and that that got us both going. Uh, thanks, Stephen. Yes, we're both good. Thank you, and we hope you are too. And we're going to carry on. We've got 10 phrases to, to go. Well, 10 phrases in total. So it's on to phrase number three. Which is the second half of the first sentence. Oh, right. Okay. And er ended mit der Winters Sonnenwende. Oh. Yeah. So right. this, is the, this is the second part. So astronomically speaking, autumn in the Northern Hemisphere begins on the day of the autumn equinox. And... It finishes with the winter sun. Right, okay. End? No? No, winter it's not sun end. End. Vender. Ven oh, the winter sun and vendor. Vendor. Yeah. So I'm, vendor is the one I'm struggling with. Well, it's the winter solstice. Ah. And it ends with the winter solstice. So because that's the beginning of winter then. Okay, so winter sun and vendor is the winter, winter solstice. Yeah, so what's the summer solstice? The, um, are, you, are we still live? Yeah, you were frozen for a second, I think. All right, okay, and now we're back. This is live video. Okay, so we know when it starts and finishes. So now we're gonna go, oh, Yes. Okay, this one's a challenge, Stephen. Einige Absorten sind im Erbst reif und können geerntet werden. That's it, yeah. Einige Obstsorten sind im Herbst reif und können geerntet werden. Okay. Now let's break that down. Uh, Obst is autumn. Uh, yeah. Einige is some. Mm -hmm. Uh, Obstorten, no, no, not Obstorten, 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 Obstorten actually Obst sounds Obst very nice as well. I'll tell you in a minute what they are, but we're looking okay. at Obstorten. Right, okay, I'm going to have to go, I mean, I've got the translation here, as Stephen knows, so I'm going to bring the translation up. So some types of fruit ripen in autumn and can be harvested. Yeah, so Obst is fruit, and to go back to your misspelled word or missaid word, Obsttorten would be fruit gattos, which of ah. course sounds very nice, but you could make them with some of the fruit that are ripe in the autumn, which comes up in the next phrase. 
just some okay. examples. All right. Let's move on then. Uh, Fres 5. Oh, I can do this one. Fres 5 is Apfel, Bionen, Pflaumen und Weintrauben. Yeah, that's uh, some of okay. those fruit that they mentioned. Äpfel, Birnen, Pflaumen und Weintrauben. Well, Apfel is apples. That I do know. Uh, Pflaumen. No, I burn and Pflaumen. I'm flummoxed. So, and Weintrauben must be grapes. So, yeah. Birnen and Pflaumen are the ones I'm uh, struggling with. Birnen are pears. And Pflaumen, also start with a P, is plums. So, Apfel, Birnen, Pflaumen und Weintrauben is apples, pears, plums and grapes, all of which ripen in the autumn. Yeah. Okay. Unless Great. you have chickens who eat them like they do with our pears and we never get to see them. This is true. This is true. They don't like the apples, though. They leave the yeah, apples they... alone, don't they? Yeah, they yeah. do. Right. Phrase six, Zug Vögel. Uh, Not a phrase, right. just a word. Zug Vögel. This word. Right. Ferg, let's, let's go with this. Vögel are birds. Uh -huh. Zug is away. So it's birds that go away. So it's migratory birds. How's that? Well done. <laughs> right. You can't tell I've got the answers, can you? But I mean, I actually did break it down and agree. I, I agree. Well, I'm. I'm, I'm impressed that you didn't say that Zug is a train. Because <laughs> I half expected you to say train birds. What are they? <laughs> but no, well done. So they're migratory birds, which, of course, we see a lot in the autumn as well. Right. OK. And staying on the theme of birds, phrase seven. Fila, Fergal, Fergal, Lauten. Fergal, Lauten. Lauten. Verlassen mit Beginn des Erbstes. Ihre Brut Gebeiter. 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 Okay. Can you say it properly? Vogel, yeah. Viele Vogelarten verlassen mit Beginn des Herbstes ihre Brutgebiete. And this is also again half a sentence. It carries on afterwards. Right. Okay. So viele, viele is many. Vögel is bird. Uh, Vögelarten. Arten, Arten. Nope. Types. Uh, okay, types. types so, or species. Fogel many, art is a bird species. All right, many bird species. Flasnes leave. Yeah. Uh, mit begin uh, in the big. Mm -hmm. In the beginning? Yeah. Of autumn? Yeah. Yeah. All right, okay. That's the short version. Many birds leave in autumn. That's the short version. Yes. Well that would be the, the mistranslation. Right. OK. Um, so it's, it's the, the, at the beginning of autumn, they leave their breeding grounds. There we are. Many bird species leave their breeding grounds at the beginning of autumn. Right. Now, I want to take a point on that, on that sentence order. Mm -hmm. Because... We translated mit begin as the beginning, mit begin des Erbsters as beginning of autumn. Uh, and we're agreeing to that, but we've actually had to move it to the end of the sentence to make sense of it. Is that that? Yeah, many bird species. We wouldn't say many bird species leave at the beginning of autumn their, <laughs> their uh, uh, breeding space, but of course. In German, we have the word order with the famous TMP, time, manner, place. Right. And the beginning of autumn is the time and right. their breeding grounds is the place. Okay, so time, manner, place. Yeah, in English, we don't care. We, d we don't, we don't. I mean, we, I mean we've taken... A grammatically correct sentence in German, and we've made it our own. Uh, but that's the beauty of language, anyway, because this is the one thing that a lot of people uh, uh, do struggle with. They see an English sentence or a German sentence or any language sentence, and they think they need to translate them literally. 
and um, right. often it works but just as often it doesn't so if you do translate a sentence literally and then you you so, so you look at it in in english then you think well actually that german sentence doesn't make any sense whatsoever you then need to turn it into something decent into english that's a bit easier from the foreign language into your own language because you you can literally translate a german sentence and you look at it and you think huh what's that right. and turn it into some decent english whereas the other way around that's a little bit more difficult yes yeah and that's that's uh, stephen's agreeing with you there because he's saying his syntax is where he struggles mm -hmm. and i do as well so we're together in that right and phrase number eight uh and again i'm going to mangle it and und zucken ihre überwinters und überwinterungsgebeiter in warmeren land ländern auf mm, how's the pronunciation first of all almost gone then. pretty good und suchen ihre überwinterungsgebiete remember ie is the e sound gebiete in wärmeren ländern auf so that's the second part of the other sentence. Yeah, yeah. So part, yeah, of, of uh, the previous phrase. So they look for their uh, overwinter um, gebeite. Place? Gebeite. Yeah, areas. 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 Gebiet is an area, so it would be areas, yeah. And, and they look for winter areas in warmer lands Ow, uh, well, so the elf. Uh, yeah. Go on. What happens? What, what, what is the elf part of? It's uh, auf suchen. Yeah. Okay, because it goes with the verb. Exactly. Which is search, a visit rather. So. In this case, yeah. There's there's the German, and okay and. Okay, and that's right. Okay, let's get this right to order. That's Stephen's translation, which is, I think that's good. What do you think? Yeah, it, it actually shows quite nicely, and, and coming back to what you said earlier on as well, uh, that if you were to give a text to several people to translate, you probably get several different translations. Mm. Yeah. yeah and 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 sometimes if you see a book translated by different people you you end up with with different uh text and what you need to see then you need to find the one that's a, it's got to be as close as possible to the original text but it still has to be readable in the other language as well right so, so we've got it's quite tricky because yes visit is to is besuchen but we haven't got besuchen in that text but visit mm. in English in this case makes a lot more sense. Right. Okay. So it's, yes. Yeah. So both translations, Stephen, we're going to take as being correct. Yeah. Um, Ish. Yeah. Okay. Good. Right. Right. Phrase number nine then. Uh, neben den sonnigen Tagen in Erst. Yeah, again, that's half a sentence. So there is a bit more coming in a minute. Actually, looking at the space now, we probably could have put it all on there. I'm not sure. But it's oh, all right. Yeah. It still works out. So, neben uh, den sonnigen Tagen im Herbst. Remember, we're in England. The, neben den sonnigen Tagen im Herbst, the sunny days in, in autumn, which we're looking forward to. <laughs> and uh, neben is besides yeah. yeah so besides the sunny days in autumn yeah uh, which we're hoping for which we're hoping for so what else happens that's the second part right okay and uh stephen's saying he's noticed that the variation with film subtitles as well it's a valuable point so he's taking on board what you just said so we come to our final phrase for today which is the second half of the previous phrase and uh, is as oft auch schön recht kalt neblig oder stürmisch stürmisch yeah. stürmisch uh, it's, yeah. oft, it's often it's not schön 
It's schon. Schon. Es ist oft auch schon recht kalt, neblig oder stürmisch. Uh -huh. So besides the sunny days in autumn. It is often rather cold. Uh, stormish, stürmisch stürmisch is stormy. Yeah. Uh, nebel is a cloud, so cloudy. Foggy? Nebel, ne, well, foggy. Nebel is, is um, uh, fog. Cloud All is right. Wolke. Okay, thank you for that correction. So, it says, it's, it's oft so schön, schon, recht kalt, nebelig, all is stormish. And uh, translation is, it's quite often quite cold, foggy, or stormy. Yeah. Now, if you said schön, recht kalt, then you're actually looking forward to the cold days. And you can't wait for it to be cold, which I okay. somehow don't think you want to say. No, I don't. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. Um, well, that's that's our tenth phrase of the day, and I this think is that's been... enough, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Ask Angelica, episode twenty-four. Uh, would you like to do a close of today's show? Yes. Um... Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoyed those sentences. If you do find them far too advanced, because you are still a beginner in German, um, like I said in the beginning of the show, do have a look on that site. They do have a lot of easier things as well. And uh, if you like singing, my blog post that actually covers autumn as well has got quite a few children's songs about autumn. Uh, that you can have a read, a listen, a sing, if you wanted to. What was that? What did I just read there? Oh, yeah. Uh, and Stephen's saying, I think I'll just find a German girlfriend. It will be much easier. She probably speaks English anyway. Then. <laughs> that's very That's very true. With but at least you accent. can do the typical English thing and talk about the weather. We can. And on so, that note, I think that, that, <laughs> from Angelica and I, um, Ask Angelica, episode 24. Thank you for watching today. Hope you enjoyed the replay, and we'll see you again in two weeks' time. And uh, thanks from Stephen. Thank you so much. Highly informative. Have a good day. You too, sir. Thank and you we'll for see watching. you later. And it's just for me. And, und, tschüss von mir. Bis später. Mm -hmm. I was going to say have a good weekend, but I didn't translate it quick enough. So see you all next in two weeks' time. Schönes Wochenende. Schönes Wochenende. And I'm ending the broadcast.